Welcome, wrestling fans, to a new generation of pro wrestling entertainment. This is Stephen Rainmaker here. Coming out to the ring right now, we have six individuals handcrafted by Stephen Rainmaker. And right now, you're going to get an audio commentary of how these characters came about, which ones mean closest to me, and where I got their inspirations. And right now, we have six men, or five men and one woman. And... They're all just having an exhibition match right now. By the way, this isn't tribute to the troops that they're at. It's actually uh, a meeting they had at Gander Mountain, uh, the hunting store, as most people like to know it. And that's why everybody's dressed in camouflage. It's hunting season. Just kidding. Yes, that is tribute to the troops. Why I chose that arena, I don't know. Alright, so here we go. We started off with six individuals. I'll start it off with the first individual. Alexia, the only female in that ring right now. I got my inspiration from her from the Hardy Boys, like the wrestling style. So whenever you see her doing like a twist of fate or a leg drop or, you know, a side effect, you can pretty much thank the Hardy Boys for that. Uh, and a little bit of an Alita inspiration too. So her style, I like to dub the extreme style. Uh, and also, a few bit of these characters are actually inspired by people I new personally like face to face and some of them are people I've never actually met before in light in person so Alexia believe it or not uh, if you pay attention she has a rose on her uh, left arm the rose is was inspired by two of my ex-girlfriends one of them had a daughter who her middle name was Rose and the second one uh, was another ex-girlfriend of mine whose middle name was also Rose. Uh, then the two tattoos she has, which is Hope that's spelled out on her back and the two stars on her chest and the funny looking hair that she has, the red hair, that was all inspired by a girl that I fell in love with. Her name was Sarah. Um, now, a big misconception about the Hope tattoo, that is not inspired by my ex-girlfriend Hope because... With all due respect, Hope really didn't mean shit to me. So that's basically where I get that from. Plus, if Alexia was a real person, I'd ask her to marry me. Because <laughs> I'm into the whole suicide girl, rocker, emo, goth thing. Now moving on to Santiago, the only masked wrestler in there. Born in uh, Nicaragua, he is uh, basically the, uh, the image of all the Mexican luchador wrestlers. Okay, I, I gotta apologize about the whole calling him a Mexican because he's not from Mexico, he's from Nicaragua. And people in Central America hate being called Mexicans. They, were, they would like to be preferred by their nationality. Um, the reason why I build him from Nicaragua, like, and you're also going to hear me re reference a lot of ex-girlfriends in this too. <laughs> so if you're a current girlfriend of mine watching this, I'm sorry. But he was actually inspired... His country was inspired by a girl that I dated whose name was Desiree. And she was born in Nicaragua, but she was raised here in the United States most of her life. Um, basically, he's got the whole Mexican wrestler, uh, luchador wrestler, pardon me. Um, he was inspired by the Lucha Libre style. You know, the mask and the, you know, the fancy clothes and the flashy gimmick. That's all part of the Hispanic culture. Plus the high flying speeds and aerial acrobatics. Now we move on to Hiro Yamazaki, the Japanese wrestler in the blue tights. He was actually an idea for a wrestler I had um, for a while. He was, uh, his fighting style, believe it or not, comes from me. A little bit of how he wrestles is how I would actually like to wrestle if I ever become a pro wrestler. Um, the Japanese symbol on the center of his tights actually represents, uh, it means love. And that is another, yet another reference to an ex-girlfriend. She had a tattoo on her wrist that, uh, spell, that was obviously the Japanese kanji for love. Um, and uh, going back to the wrestling style, I mixed it up a little bit with, um, like Dean Malenko and... Uh, Chris Jericho, CM Punk, pretty much in that whole um, cliche of wrestler. Now moving on to my MMA fighter, my mixed martial artist, uh, Titus, 
the guy in the orange uh, camos. My inspiration from him, actually, he was supposed to be the Japanese wrestler uh, uh, Kazuyo Tanaka, who Kazuyo was from Osaka, Japan, and he basically like he was a shoe wrestler who uh, hated America, but the only reason why he came to the United States is to become a pro uh, pro wrestler and make some money. And right now, Alexa is getting eliminated by Titus. So then I switched up his character, I switched up his nationality, his race, and everything. I decided to make him uh, an American from Des Moines, Iowa, who was incarcerated for about 10 years, and he finally came back and he was going to wreak havoc on Anthony Jun and Dante Morgan. But I decided, you know, if you're locked up in prison for so long, you're not going to have any time to really do MMA, you're just going to be locked up. So now I just decided to make him some super badass from Australia who's trained as a teenager to just fight and he's wanting to kick Dante and Anthony Jun's ass. Alright, now moving on to that big powerhouse in the ring, Dante, the guy in the silver tights. Um, I came up with the character of Dante about 10 years ago. Uh, he was actually supposed to be a white guy covered in tattoos with a mask on and he was supposed to have like mental breakdowns just like um Kane but I figured that was just that was boring that was just cliche stupid you know I'm tired of the whole superhuman wrestler thing even though ironically my favorite wrestler is uh the Undertaker uh yeah so the whole issue with Dante is his name I couldn't find a really good name that would fit a big powerhouse so I called him Demolition and then I ended up find, you know, realizing, well, there's a, another wrestler. His name, or there's a tag team stable. Their name was Team Demolition. They were a team back in the late 80s to the 90s. And I was just like, fuck it. So I decided to come up with uh, Dante. And I wanted to make him a black man because I never, you know... And I'm going to shoot here for a minute on my brother, and I hate to be a dick. I love my brother to death, but whenever we used to create characters growing up, he would always accuse me of making my my guys look all the same and wrestle all the same, which I thought was bullshit, because obviously you could tell we got a black guy, you know, we got one white guy, we have a Japanese, a Chinese, and the white guy's being a dick, <laughs> We have a woman in there, we have a Mexican in there, we have many fighting styles, we have martial arts, mixed martial arts, shoot wrestling, grappling, powerhouse, uh, I just want, I wanted to mix it up. So anyways, going back to Dante, I decided I wanted to make him the powerhouse of the group, and I wanted to make him the big buff guy like Bobby Lashley, and uh, Batista, and Ryback, and Goldberg, and Brock Lesnar, so that's how I came up with uh, Dante. And then finally we have my golden beacon, which is the guy in the gold tights and the long hair, Anthony Jun. Anthony is actually, out of all the wrestlers, him and Dante are the only two American wrestlers. Now Anthony, believe it or not, he's a Chinese American. I, mean, I build him from Long Beach, California, and he's supposed to be somebody in his early 20s. Now, his character, which is about to be an annihilated by um, Hiro Yamazaki, his character was inspired by Bruce Lee. And I've had him for the longest time out of everybody. And I basically made him my like dominant wrestler, my top guy. Obviously, he's not too top right now because he just got his ass kicked by uh, Hiro. But uh, Anthony Jun, like I said, he's he's my favorite dude. He does the aerial acrobatics, and if you've ever, if you know anybody that like any of my buddies have ever listened into this, if you've ever taken a character of mine and played with them, uh, you'll obviously know that Anthony's the smallest dude. Who uh, he doesn't do really too many pickup moves. Like he won't pick anybody up because whenever I bill him at like a hundred and something, two hundred and something. He really can't pick up the bigger guys. <sighs> he can't lift up like Dante or even like Titus. 
Which, by the way, Titus is gone because of a possum pin. Oh, God, it looks like uh, Hero is about to finish him off with the uh, Crossfire Powerbomb. And now we're down to these two guys. I'm not going to lie. I, I didn't like the results of this. You know, obviously Dante's being eliminated, and we're just down to the the Hispanic luchador and the Japanese uh, high flyer. I just, I didn't like the ending of this. I wanted, like, Anthony Jun or Dante to win this, because they're supposed to be, like, my top guys. Don't get me wrong, I mean, Daddy loves all of his children the same, but I really prefer if somebody else would have won it. But, hey, I mean, you can't argue with results, obviously. This is a, it's an epic match going on. It's been going on for about ten minutes now. Uh... But yeah, I just, like, when I created my league, I wanted to make, I didn't just want to make, like, all white American guys with tattoos and they're big and buff. And I didn't want to make them too generic either. Like, I didn't want to call them, like, the Death Killer or the the Hell Hell's Guardian or, and then I didn't create, if you notice, I'm not in there. I didn't put my character in there. I didn't make him, you know, superhuman. Obviously, too buff for his own good and... Making him, like, really huge. and But he can do, like, aerial acrobatics. I thought that was stupid. And when I create my characters, I want them all to fit their class. Like, obviously, I want the small guy to be able to do aerial moves. The big guy to do powerhouse moves. And I just, anybody in between, I wanted in between. And I didn't want to create anybody extraordinary, either. You know, I mean, all these guys, obviously, really good wrestlers, you know. I wanted to make all my guys realistic, too. I wanted it to be like... Like, if you've actually ever watched wrestling, who would you see? I mean, normally, if you're watching, like, WWE, you see a lot of, like, the same guys in there. All Americans, obviously. Most of them either just white or black. But in my company, I wanted it to be, like, a recruiting center from, like, across the world. Pretty much like the movie The Condemned. All right, there you go. Chaotic. Uh, Titans of Pro Wrestling. Uh, hopefully, the series will kick off here by the by the winter of two thousand thirteen.